This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. When you get behind the wheel of a new car, you want to know it's been properly crash tested. And so when we can, we always share news of new crash test results. This week, Euro NCAP published its latest round of crash tests, awarding full five-star ratings to newly launched BYD Sea Lion 7, Geely EX5, Hongqi EHS9 and Polestar 3. Both the BYD Sea Lion 7 and Polestar 3 performed exceptionally well in the child occupant tests, each scoring an impressive 93%. However, the Polestar 3 stood out with its high overall performance and additional safety features, including a sensor that prevents the car from being locked if it detects a child is left inside. While all four vehicles did receive five-star ratings, the Geely EX5 was penalised for not meeting Euro NCAP's child presence detection system requirements, and it also had a broken weld on one car's A-pillar, which did not affect subsequent tests. The Hon Chi E HS9 also saw a score adjusted due to a small tear in the driver's airbag. One of the oft-discussed fears that non-EV owners cite about driving or riding in an EV is that there will be significant electromagnetic interference from the car's battery pack and motors inside the cabin, interference which they fear will be damaging to their health. We've debunked this claim many times over the years, quoting successive studies and, of course, the inverse square law governing electromagnetic radiation. But this week, a new study from Germany, one commissioned by the German Federal Office for Radiation Protection, and the German Federal Ministry for the Environment yet again laid out in clear scientific terms that the overall risks to electric car occupants from electromagnetic fields is no greater than it would be in an internal combustion engine vehicle. It took measurements from seven battery electric, two hybrid and one ICE vehicle made between 2019 and 2021 and collated the results. Interestingly, the study notes that the size of the battery pack or the motor played less impact in the radiation detected with small short-term spikes detected when vehicles powered on, when braking or under spirited driving. And given that induced magnetic fields vary according to the current flow, that kind of makes sense. Nevertheless, while the report says it wants to investigate things further, its overall findings are that EVs are as safe as any other car type when it comes to that particular perceived risk. Alphabet's Waymo Robotaxi service has a strong start to the year, generating significant income and expanding into new markets. This week, it announced its latest expansion into Washington, D.C., with plans to launch its Robotaxi service there as early as next year. By the time it arrives in the U.S. capital, Waymo will have fleets operating in San Francisco, Phoenix, Los Angeles, Austin, Atlanta and Miami, making D.C. the latest addition to its growing East Coast presence. Waymo also plans to collaborate with DCMO emergency services and law enforcement to ensure its vehicles don't obstruct or interfere with emergency response efforts within the city. And while Waymo hasn't explicitly stated its reasons for choosing Washington, D.C., we think it's clear that the move aims to impress and educate lawmakers, potentially sparking discussions on the future of autonomous vehicle legislation at the federal level. Just a few weeks ago, BYD made waves in the automotive world by unveiling its ultra-fast charging standard for EVs, its Super E platform, which is capable of charging at speeds of up to 1 megawatt. Since then, two other Chinese brands have introduced their own version of 1 megawatt charging, but this week, BYD officially launched and priced the first vehicles capable of these lightning-fast charging speeds, which can add 400 kilometers, 248 miles of range, in just five minutes. Enter the Han L and Tang L a sedan and sports utility vehicle respectively, both offered in various trim levels. Powered by BYD's 83.2 kilowatt hour blade battery packs, the standout feature is the price. The Han L will be available to Chinese customers starting at 219,800 yuan, more than 50,000 yuan less than initially announced. While exchange rates fluctuate, that currently works around to about 30,000 US dollars, and that price includes a host of standard features that customers in most markets wouldn't find in an entry-level model. We've been fans of vehicle-to-load and vehicle-to-grid technologies for a really long time here at the channel, and just today I tested my whole home backup system to make sure it's still running smoothly. 
and it is. And over in Sweden, a joint project between Volvo Cars and Gothenburg Energy saw four Volvo EX40s supply 111 kilowatt hours of energy to Gothenburg's energy's local energy marketplace during March. The project, launched in late 2023, aimed to explore the potential of not only building grid resilience, but also providing EV owners the opportunity to earn money by letting their cars serve as an energy buffer during peak demand periods, thus helping reduce the reliance on expensive, often more polluting, peaker plants. With the pilot programme now officially concluded, there's optimism for a broader initiative that could be rolled out in the region, offering both new and existing EV owners the chance to install vehicle-to-grid capable hardware at home while supporting the grid and earning a bit of extra income along the way. Nissan has been working on semi and fully autonomous driver assistance technology for quite a while, with its first venture into the field involving a series of early Nissan Leafs. While its prototypes have included LiDAR for some time, production models equipped with Nissan's ProPilot semi-autonomous system have not yet featured it. But that's set to change in 2027, according to the company. In that year, it says it will launch production vehicles equipped with LiDAR paired with a full suite of radars and visual cameras, all integrated together with software from Wave AI. Nissan has stated that the new system will be capable of handling real-world driving conditions, much like a human driver, but still wants to categorise it as level two, meaning it will require the driver to remain alert and ready to take control at any time. In addition, Nissan has set 2028 as the launch date for its first production EVs built with solid-state battery packs. Given that Nissan has faced some financial challenges recently, it remains to be seen as to whether the company can fulfil these ambitious plans given its current financial situation. Earlier this year, Volkswagen previewed its much-anticipated so-called €20,000 electric car in the concept ID Everyone. Since then, we've heard several updates about what the production model will offer. To recap, in its production form, the ID1 will be the first vehicle built by Volkswagen using a jointly developed digital platform created in collaboration with Rivian. As we've covered in previous shows, it will be manufactured in Portugal, and this week a local publication reported that Volkswagen has set September 2027 as the official start of series production for the same, meaning early models could be in customers' hands by the end of that year. Unlike other models, such as the ID2, ID3 and ID4, we now know that the ID1 won't be rebadged for other Volkswagen Group models, as was the case with its predecessor, the Volkswagen E-Up. It's exciting to see a truly affordable EV moving forwards with production plans, but given the current global political climate, two years still feels like a really long time away. It's hoping it actually happens. And finally, some much-needed good news from the world of renewable and clean energy. A new report published by Ember, their sixth annual global electricity review, reveals that in 2024, 40.9% of the world's electricity generation came from non-fossil fuel sources. For the first time since World War II, nuclear power and renewable energy generation together pushed non-fossil fuel generation above the 40% mark. Renewable energy generation alone contributed 858 terawatt hours of power in the year, making a 49% increase from its previous record set in 2022. Solar power also played the biggest role in this growth, retaining its position as the fastest growing power source for the 20th consecutive year, with its total generating capacity capacity doubling in just three years. Renewables are now so cost-affected to add to the grid that it's hard to imagine a future where they aren't soon the primary source of power generation. And that's a positive outlook for everyone, no matter where they live. The downside though, while non-fossil fuel sources grew last year, fossil fuel use also increased by 1.4%, primarily due to higher grid demand from increased air conditioning use and, of course, unfettered growth of artificial intelligence. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, how to file and pay your RUCs and much more. Follow the link below and start that journey today. And now it's time for those last two stories. It's always fun to see how different automakers engage in projects that transcend the traditional bounds between the auto industry and the rest of the world. 
Over the years, we've seen some pretty impressive collaborations between actors, musicians and artists. And this week, it was the turn of Toyota and its BZ4X, which took three of the crossovers to the Miami Art Week. Of course, it didn't just take the cars down there. It worked with three different mural and street artists from the US to create murals reflecting the spirit of each's hometown, while also incorporating future hope an EV can bring. Cars, artists and original murals all made their way down to Miami for the big reveal. It's quite the display and it's got me wondering, if you could paint something onto your EV, what would you paint on it? And finally, if you've spent any time riding an electric motorcycle, you'll know that the large hunk of meat on top you, impacts its ability to be particularly aerodynamic. And if you've been watching the wonderful Mark Travels YouTube channel, you'll also know the difference how quickly you travel can make to an electric motorcycle. Today, the majority of electric motorcycles on the market do somewhere between 100 miles or 160 kilometers per charge in ideal situations on the freeway and more in town, even though their official range figures may be much higher. And this week, Verge Motorcycles celebrated setting a new real-world range record in the Greater London area, with a slight twist. Riders Sam Clark and Sarah Sloman both took turns riding through the streets of Greater London, managing to eke out 193 miles or 310.689 kilometres on a single charge in 16 hours, with 7% left in the battery of their stock, Verge TS Pro. Admittedly, they were riding in Greater London, which is primarily city streets rather than motorways, with very low speed limits. So I'm just going to leave it to you to decide how impressive this is. Nevertheless, I think two wheels rock and no one can convince me otherwise, so well done team. And on that note, we are done for today. Before I go, make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from the channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it's high time you switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It's super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I will be back next week. But in the meantime, do check out the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge offerings on this very same channel. He's always doing something that's worth a look, so make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.